welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. Today we're going to reveal our final finished collage projects. Be sure and give us a subscribe and like for more great quilting content. I'm Kim Sandberg and we've got the whole education team here with me. We've got Denise Dowdrick, Amy Lucy, Christina Whitney, also known as contestant number one. That would be me. <laughs> We have been having so much fun this month, ladies, haven't we? Yes. Having a blast. Oh my gosh. This, uh, this, these projects have just been so much fun to work on. So I'm really excited today to take a look at what everybody's got finished. And I'm even more excited to hear about some of the, um, let's say, challenges we ran into and how we overcame those. And really just to see the finished product and hear about the experience. So, hmm. Should we start with contestant number one? Sure. I think we should. All right, okay. Christina, tell us, show us. Well, last week we showed you the heart quilt mm -hmm. that's hanging up behind us. And in the, our first week, I had talked about how I wanted to do something on the long arm, like yeah. directly on the long arm, none of the um, steam a seam, all yeah. of that stuff ahead of time. So I actually did that with the heart project with a lot of help from people that were here in the studio yeah and um, coming in for retreats. So that was a lot of fun. It went by very quickly. It did, yeah. Um, and it was a very open shape, so I didn't have to really worry too much about getting different values and different placements. So um, I think for that project, it worked really well. I agree. For my second project, it wouldn't work quite as well <laughs> because I did need to kind of see the overall picture before I started right. quilting stuff down. So here, you guys ready for this? I'm ready for the video. Okay, I do have to say though first, this is quilted. It is. It is bound. Uh huh. It has a sleeve on it. Uh huh. And it has a variation of a label. <laughs> Meaning, I took a sharpie marker right before we started filming, and I wrote my initials and the date somewhere on the back here. <laughs> but I'm calling it completed. I love it. So love this it. is. Oh. Oh, my that, Christina oh that's beautiful it's absolutely lemon beautiful. tree look at that oh, it's so gorgeous I had so much fun with this and I learned a lot of things yeah. um, yes there are things on here that I would do differently if I were to do it again mm -hmm. but I'm not going to point it out as a mistake but as something that I learned in the process it was a design choice right um, sure. <laughs> actually, it was just me not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> we'll be honest. So the thing that um, if I were to do this one again, I would change is I feel like my green leaves, mm -hmm. the values that I used, I, I really focused on having the light, the medium and the dark. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really take into consideration how much of an extreme. Oh, okay. And okay. so these leaves up here on the top mm -hmm. almost blend into the background. Yeah. I remember when you had just finished it, you mm -hmm. held it up for us and we all were like, where are the leaves on the top? Exactly. And so what I tried to do to kind of compensate for that mm -hmm. is I did a lot of thread play yeah. when I was doing the quilting for this. It looks so good. So I took a lot of different colors mm -hmm. and I actually brought my threads oh, here I with love me. This. You did use a lot of colors. Look at that. <laughs> I did In a lot quilting. of thread changes. And I mean, you look at these three different greens mm -hmm. and they're not greens that I would normally, you know, put together like mm -hmm. this bright lime green. And um, but it added some extra depth in the values to the, the leaves. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even as much as I would have liked, but compared to what it was before I did right. the quilting, it did make a big difference. Um, I'll, I'll say that this is how much they blended. Mm -hmm. I was quilting the background fabric and I started quilting over the leaves because I thought that they were part of the background. <laughs> so using thread really helps to add that extra um, color even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think about using our quilting just as kind of a backdrop, just something to mm -hmm. kind of keep the layers together. But I wanted to do a little bit more of almost like thread painting. Yeah. So I used um, So Fine, Magnifico, and I even used um, an older version of Magnifico called Highlights mm. that I had. Because they're the uh, right colors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I did notice with the quilting on this is that I had 
fairly small pieces, not as small as some of your guys's, yeah. but with it being raw edge applique, I wanted to make sure that everything got stitched down. Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> I was not thinking really far in advance when I picked my batting. Mm -hmm. I did two I layers of wool batting because that's what I happened to have. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna get all this definition. Ooh. And then I started quilting and realized I'm gonna have to just quilt this whole entire thing to death. So there's yeah. not really a whole lot of no. anything other than stiffness. <laughs> Especially because even your back background mm -hmm. is the collage piece. Like it even is. your background has the, um, What's it called on the back? The steam seam. Yeah, the steam seam, mm -hmm. which that, that it doesn't really let. It's it's not mm -hmm. made to let the the loft show from the batting. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I lots love, of things that I've learned, but I I love it. I'm mm -hmm. so happy with it. Um, I'm glad that I changed it and made my lemons, mm -hmm. and I learned. You did. I think that's the whole goal of this is to mm -hmm. learn new things and to be able to move on. So I've already got another project picked out, ready mm -hmm. to go. We'll see how long it takes to get it done, but <laughs> I'm going to try some of her um, Emily Taylor's parrots. Oh, cool. Wow. Okay, That'll that's really awesome. fun. Yep. I'm excited so. to see that. <laughs> now, Christina had another fun little experience with this. Oh, no. What did I've I do? I actually got a picture that we oh. show. <laughs> so she made a, she made a, a rookie mistake. <laughs> we think it's even three rookie mistake. <laughs> okay. So yes. fess up, fess up. Fess we'll, up. We'll, okay. Uh, We'll put the picture in here. Yes. So I was quilting this. I had plenty of backing. Mm -hmm. Everything was perfect. Got it on the long arm. I did it on an Amara here in the studio. And um, at some point, I just wasn't thinking. I was just so excited about quilting yeah. that I didn't realize that when I put the top on, mm -hmm. I left too much of the backing up at the top oh. and didn't leave enough at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, every, well, everything was covered with the two layers of wool batting, so right, I couldn't right. see anything I was doing. Yeah. Um, but luckily, I had basted my backing onto my leader rather than pinning it. Right. Because I ended up quilting through my leader, Just not not bit. even realizing it, because there were so many layers. <laughs> What's one more layer? You know, <laughs> of heavy canvas. So I have to say that the handy quilter machines, fabulous. I had no issues whatsoever yeah. with going through all of these layers. Yeah. Um, there were some issues with, you know, some of the gookiness from the steam scene. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Are you, any of you guys going to talk about that? No, why don't you? Okay. Well, I'm not. I don't know about you two. I didn't, I didn't have too much. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I had, had some issues with it. I know that I've had issues with it in the past and I know that um, lots of people have commented and that's mm -hmm. a concern. So here is my, oh, I yeah, lost what was it. Your, what was your go-to that you used? Oh, it's <laughs> hiding over there. I'll just talk about it. Okay. Um, so, the gumminess from the steam seam yeah. would build up on the needle as right. I'm stitching. And you could visually see that on mm -hmm. there. So I would take a little rubbing alcohol swab pad and I would just rub it along the needle there and that would clean that off and I could continue quilting. Yeah. If I left it on there for too long, then it would start to shred the fabric or the thread. The thread, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my little tip for the day. Yeah. Well, many tips. First of all, don't stitch over the, the leader. <laughs> Use the rubbing alcohol swab pads yeah. and figure out your color values. Yeah, there okay? you go, there you go. I'm here to teach you through my own mistakes. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> okay. I, lo I love too that on this one, like traditionally on collage quilts, you sh usually see some kind of an all over pattern and you definitely went outside of the box here and you quilted it, you know, just like you said, you've got a different pattern in the background, on your leaves, on your lemons, all of those kind of things. You did more of a custom quilting approach to it, which I thought was really cool. I've never yeah. actually seen that on a collage quilt. Yeah. I tried to kind of mimic the shape of the leaves mm -hmm. and the grain, and then the I did like a spiral in the lemon to kind of keep oh, that circular cool. oval shape. Yeah. Um, and then I I think I did a wood grain in the I can't remember what I did there. Yeah. Um, and then I just did some straight arcs, straight arcs, <laughs> some arced <laughs> lines. <laughs> along the pot just to hold everything in place without you know adding too good. much so it adds some visual interest though I think it yeah. looks really great so it was lots of fun I'm glad I did it yeah yeah it's oh it turned out so cool we love it we love it okay so who's next for the big uh, reveal I think Amy is which means I have to stand up and <laughs> do this so her quilt's actually hanging back here so okay. let me we uh -huh. figured out we figured out the logistics of how to do that. Scoot, swivel, stretch. Yes. And then it's going to be getting back on there without. 
Kim's the only enough. one tall enough, so <laughs> let me make her do this. Okay, so. there we go. And then I'll get right. out of the way. Oh, that's gorgeous. And we'll move out of the way. And nobody oh, fell off their stool. There we go. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Okay. Amy, so. let's lean so we can see the whole elephant for one second. All right. So Excellent. Pretty. Okay. Okay. So here's my quilt. And it's done. And it, I even have a label on the back. That is so amazing. So. I know yours, hers is like the only one that's 100% completely done. The rest of us have maybe a little something missing. Oh, I still don't have a sleeve on it. There you go. Okay. Oh, you don't have a sleeve on it. Well then, okay, okay never yes. mind. And we should show your label though, because you get extra points for your label. It's very cute. I did a label. Very cute. And she put a little, one of the little um, flowers mm -hmm. left over that you'd cut out. So it's so cute. And where's this going to hang? In Annie's office. So she is the manager of customer relations here at Handy Quilter and she loves elephants. So it is going to hang in her office. Um, I did ask her if she wanted flowers quilted in the background or something geometric, and she said she wanted something geometric, so that is what we did. Um, I chose um, a design that's called Too Simple. It's cute. Um, and it's very, it's a very simple design. I think it's perfect. Um, and it no, quilted too. out beautifully. And I actually only had to wipe down the needle like two or three times with an alcohol wipe. And there's a lot of layers on that elephant yeah. with the seam a seam. There's a lot. So, yeah, but this was a lot of fun to do. It was a lot of cutting. So what did you learn from this project? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of wishing the background, I wouldn't have cut so many pieces. I wish I would have done more solid pieces in the background and then just layered the flowers on top of it. Okay. Um, rather than you know kind of more like what denise did with hers mm -hmm. um just to save on time mm. um it looks so great though with all the flowers yeah, it really in does the I, is amazing. I, yeah. I do love how it turned out i do it's love really, how it turned really out cute. i realized whenever i moved it i did need to stabilize it by ironing things down mm -hmm. and so I wasn't able to, you know, put things under things later on, like my hand movements that nobody can see. Um, but um, yeah, I, I really like how it turned out. I really like the flowers. I really like the design, but I'm, I'm excited to try my next project now that I've done this. So do you have your so, next project planned? Yes, I'm going to do the horse that oh. is um, Emily Taylor's horse. Okay. I've had that pattern for a long time. Yeah, but you're gonna tackle that one I, after I'm, after she told us that it was a, a more a, um, what did she call it? Advanced. advanced. <laughs> you're advanced, <laughs> not now, the Amy. first one. I'm advanced now. I did one. <laughs> yeah. And who and who was this pattern? From? This was so Laura Heine. Laura Heine. And what's it called? Do you remember? Lulu the elephant. It's very cute. Oh yeah. It was a really fun one. Yeah. Really fun one. That's not a word, really. Really isn't a word, but it's fun. <laughs> it's 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 turned out really, really well. I, lo I love it. I think it's really fun. I think it's, I think it's going to look great in Annie's office. So if you come to visit Handy Quilter, you can be sure and take a peek in there and see yes, it. Yes, definitely. So, all right. Well, moving on to contestant number three. Number three. You're contestant number two. I'm contestant <laughs> number three. Here's mine. And uh, so, first of all, any of you that have been following the series, you're going to recognize that this is maybe a quarter of what I set out to do. So I've got to uh, fess up here. I, I got everything ready to go. I had cut all the strips and I took them with me on a business trip and I had an afternoon where I didn't have to work and so I went back to my hotel room and I thought, Oh, I'll knock this whole thing out in like an hour and a half and then I'll be able to go do something else. Just doing the cow head took three and a half hours. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm done. <laughs> so, so I just did the head. Um, so, and it turned out great. I actually, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, I really loved doing this with the strips. I, I have done quite a few of these collage quilts and I've usually done them um, more both the ways that Christina and Amy did. 
This one where we just cut the strips and then you use the strips to create kind of uh, like the shading mm -hmm. and within the pattern, it was it, it was a new technique and it was really fun to do. I had, a, I, had I really enjoyed putting it together. Um, when I got to quilting it, I wanted to do something really fast because I had like an hour. You guys are probably finding a theme here. I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't budget enough time to get this done the way that I needed to. So I just, I did straight lines going across from left to right. And then to prevent my thread from shredding, going right to left, coming back, I did wavy lines in between, just going back and forth. And I, I like the way the, I like the way the quilting turned out. I've, I, in my mind, it kind of reminds me of like a barbed wire or a wire fence. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I agree. Can you that guys see that? Really yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So I thought, I thought that was quite fitting with, with the cow theme. So I really liked how that turned out. And yeah, it was, it was, it was fun to do. It's very relaxing. I loved that I did a project and I didn't have to spend a lot of time at my sewing machine. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was really quite quick. I think the part of the process that actually took the longest was pressing the stabilizer onto the back of all of the strips and then cutting them. Um, Cause that probably took me an entire afternoon. Even, yeah. even the piecing part didn't take as long, so. How do you do the strip or the outlining? So the outlining is just black pieces of fabric. So this is just some strips of black and I cut all of the strips were, um, cut anywhere from like an eighth of an inch to maybe a half of an inch wide. Mm -hmm. And then when I was laying all of this out, following the instructions, this is a Laura Heine pattern. Um, she had you uh, do the black outline first, lay that on top of all the lines that you've drawn, and then you filled it, everything in. Oh, cool. So that's, all right. so that's how it kind of, it, it has more of that outline look. Some of these black strips are actually a lot thicker than they look. Um, it was, I think, actually part of the reason why it took so long to lay everything down was there was a lot of trimming involved. Because mm -hmm. I'd have to cut things so that mm -hmm. they would fit around the edges and, and do little parts to make things fill in, try to follow and create some depth. Um, use those values that, that Emily <laughs> talked to us about in here, which was, which was, it was good. I actually love that I'd gotten that because I think it helped me create more of a... Um, a visually pleasing visually pleasing image. i like that a visually pleasing <laughs> image it has it has some depth to it because of the different values and it was fun to look at these strips too from the point of view of just considering them by values and not always just looking at the color so i do have to say i really like the turquoise in here Isn't that that's fun? not like a color that you would normally I see on a, cow, on a cow but i think it really adds to the piece the, the turquoise up here and up here. Yeah. And and I will freely admit, I followed like the picture on the front of the pattern had some of these color placements and I, I did use it. I, I used a kit that I bought from mm -hmm. Laura Heine with uh, with these fabrics, but it was, it was fun. It was just so much fun to put them in there and create a lot of color. I think when you stand back and really look at it, it's fun to see the whole picture. Yeah, it, it really all it comes great... together. So if we hold it up, you, get, you can see here that it is just, it's really fun. I didn't realize that you had put the black down first. So you're yeah. kind of making a coloring page yes. and then just trying not to go outside of the yeah, lines. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And and you know how I talked about how it took the three and a half hours to do. The part that took the longest was trimming all these mm -hmm. strips so that I got the right um, the right amount of outline showing. Yeah. And you'll notice um, <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. I started, I started at the nose and worked my way up. So down here, my edges are all really nice. But then when you get up to the top, you start seeing like there's there's ones here that I didn't trim so well because I was getting tired of clipping with my little scissors. I was like, I want to go outside. I want to go outside. I have a trick that could help you with that. Oh, what's that? Oh, a sharpie. sharpie. You know what? I actually, <laughs> I literally in my room, I was like, Oh man, I wish I had a black <laughs> Sharpie. Um, here's, here's another confession. So the, the first step when you're following um, one of Laura Heine's patterns is you trace the outline on the entire piece of fabric. So I did, I put this up, I had a big sliding glass door in my hotel room. I taped both of them up and I traced the whole thing. And I used a Sharpie, but the Sharpie I used, you guys, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. It's like a really light purple. So if you look really carefully, 
right here, you can still see some of those lines because I traced the entire <laughs> cow out, steer, whatever you want to call this. But like I said, I just did the head. But that was the only color I had. So I didn't, I figured that wouldn't really fix my black problem there. So. Well, I've got some black fabric markers at my desk, I but I think that these lines that you drew that you were pointing yeah. out, and nobody, I don't think, no. would ever notice. It looks like it blends right in with that fabric. It really, it really, really does, but it's it kind of makes me laugh whenever I look at it. I'm like, that's me being overly ambitious again. I always look at a quilt and I'm like, oh yeah, I can finish that in a weekend. Three months later of weekends, I'm like, ah, uh, maybe I'll finish it this weekend. <laughs> oh, I think we're all guilty of that. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yep. This, I, I'm so happy with how this turned out though. I've just got to figure out where I'm going to put it. I think for right now, we're just going to hang it in the studio. But um, at home, I'm going to have to find a place for this because I really like it. So. Okay, we got to ask one more question. Yeah. <laughs> what about your hanging sleeve and your label? Ah, okay, <laughs> well, my label is done. Um, I, will, I will also admit, I wrote this down right before we started filming. So my label, it's right there. And it is, it is written, I wrote, Collage Quilt Watch and Learn Series from 2022. And I'm calling mine the floating cow head because it's just the, it's just the head. It's not the whole cow. And then my name and the, the date, of course. But yeah. And um, the, the sleeve, it's, it's on here, but it's not um, attached all the way. So you guys will see, I haven't stitched down this bottom edge. So I'm almost done. I think, I feel like we're all... Christina's probably the closest. I don't know if you can call just signing the back of your quilt actually a label. Although, oh gosh, I I've totally done that. <laughs> you have a floating sleeve, a floating cow floating. head and a floating it's, sleeve. It's going to just hang right the there theme. like that right now. <laughs> we'll fix it though. I'll get that stitched down during one of the um, upcoming Zoom meetings I'm sure I'll be sitting through in the next few days. So, well, that's wow. fantastic, Kim. Yeah, well, that looks great. So I think we've got some more animals. Mm -hmm. yep. We got we got one more set. And you are so further along than I am because <laughs> scoot that down. I have no sleeve. You yet. don't have a sleeve. I don't have a sleeve. But but I kind of have a label because mm -hmm. as we were sitting down, <laughs> I, I actually signed my quilt. So there's a lot of typography going on yeah. in the prints. So I just That's added so a signature and the date right there. And and at some point in my spare time, I'm going to go back and add an actual label and, so and a hanging sleeve. We can do that. So Denise signed her name right there. Kind of hard to see because it just blends in with that print right below yeah, it. Yeah, it's just a suggestion. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a suggestion. It's there though. So I can claim my quilt back. So, yeah. but I had I had so much fun this doing this. So and beautifully. Should we hold it up so that? Do you remember in the first series, um, in the first show, I said I knew exactly how I was going to quilt it. Yeah. I knew I was doing hexagons so on this. So this was the pattern you had planned from the yes, beginning. It awesome. is the pattern I planned in the beginning. It's gorgeous. I did make a few changes to some of my quilt team after seeing some of Christina's, <laughs> I'm going to call them struggles. I'm just going <laughs> to call them struggles. Um, so one thing I um, watched, she was quilting, she seemed to have, um, less trouble with the shiny thread, the Magnifico. Mm. So I mm. did edge to edge quilting and I used Magnifico. It's a trilobal polyester. Mm -hmm. It's shiny, a little slippery. And I did clean my needle a few times um, while quilting with that alcohol wipe. And that really helped, but I didn't get a ton of buildup. Mm. And I, I wonder if it's just the, the thread itself didn't attract as much of that, um, that fusible product. So Especially because yours is fused all over. And mine's fused, fused all over, and, and I did cheat a little bit. Amy was saying she wished she had done some things like I did. The bigger. I have big background pieces, like the whole bee head and, and antennas and the legs. They're all one piece of fabric mm. that had a, a print on it. And then I went back and added just a few little pieces here and there. Um, my favorite part that I added are the bee eyelashes. <laughs> they were little so tiny sunflowers with, uh, you can't really see it on camera, but they're gold metallic. And oh, I just gorgeous. loved the little, the little extra that they added. Yeah. There's some sparkle. Right there. Even well, from right here, it looks like the eyelashes are embroidered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just lots of little snips oh. with scissors. <laughs> oh, they look so cool. And this fabric here too, with that little honeycomb texture yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. It is so cool. It was really just so exciting to do. I, I'm I'm anxious to do another one already. It's really a lot of fun. So cool. Now, what's the name of the background pattern that you quilted it with? Um, 
That's a really good question. I remember going to Quiltable and searching Hexagon, mm -hmm. and it is one done by Jen Eskridge, and I can't remember the exact name. Um, I'm gonna call it Jen Eskridge's Hexagon Pattern from <laughs> Quiltable. Um, it was perfect when I saw it. It's almost like a little grandmother's flower yeah. garden design. So it's not, it's not tricky to line up. It right. lined up really easily because there's some wiggle room in it. And, yeah. and that just made it even more fun to work with. But I love the extra texture. Here on the B, this is a black polka dot fabric. This hexagon pattern you see is just all the quilting and that, oh. that gold thread color that I used. It just- And I just love mm -hmm. how that- I love it too. I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. So it, um, it was a little bigger than I originally thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. but it's um, really a great size wall hanging. Yeah. It's nice and stiff, so I think yeah. it's going to hold. <laughs> oh. It's gonna hang well. I've got two it's layers of 80-20 in here to just really oh, stabilize. And I used a um, heat and bond light mm -hmm. in all of my background pieces. So I actually do get a little bit of the texture of the quilting showing. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as much throughout the body of the bee because I used a heavier um, product, fusible product in there. So mm -hmm. it doesn't show quite as much, but overall I'm very, very pleased. And, and I did learn quite a bit about this, <laughs> about value placement. I struggled with the backing until, um, going back and, and trying to remember some things that Emily Taylor had shared mm -hmm. with us about value. And once I started looking at the background with value and placing the lighter colors around the bee and the darker colors out to the edge, I think it just kind of gives this glowing effect it around does. the bee. And I think it's beautiful. Now that you mention that, I totally see that. I hadn't realized you'd done that. That's really, you did such a good job on this. I, I had think so it's much really fun. fun. I started off with, um, it's a Laura Heine pattern. I started mm -hmm. off with a Laura Heine kit, but I did go back and choose some of my own fabrics mm -hmm. and add some extra little touches here and there. I, I love um, bee themed fabric and I, I discovered I had quite a collection more than <laughs> I thought. So I started dipping into that and really just, just had a lot of fun choosing little fabrics to go here and, yeah. and there when I wanted. Yeah, there's even little hidden bees, extra little bees and in little, there. Little fun little things that you cut out. I feel like every time I look at this, I, I discover another fun little, I'm like, oh, that's so cute that you put that in there. Oh, look at that, that little beehive. Oh, look at that little, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really it's like an ice bike. Quilt. Yeah, yeah, that's uh -huh. really it. It is. And, we'll have and to make a little sheet for it for people. Maybe, to Maybe yeah. Look find this one. Well, and and kind of a funny story while doing this, I was actually doing this. I don't have a design wall. I laid it out on my bed. <laughs> Christina's laughing because I already <laughs> told her. I laid it out on my bed, so it was it was taking up my bed every day when I would work on it, and then I would fold it up and put it away. And there was one little bee that I'd cut out that I wanted to put on, and I'd lost it. And when it was all done and I was ready to quilt it, I was bringing it into work and I saw a spider on the floor one morning and I screamed. And then I realized it was the little bee that I cut out. <laughs> so I picked it up, brought it in with me and glued it on before oh, I, I think it's down towards the bottom, but oh, it funny. scared me to death. I thought it was a spider. So pretty, some pretty realistic looking insects yeah, going on here. Definitely, definitely. Oh, that's so fun. So Denise, I've got a question for you. Sure. You had mentioned that you were gonna use different types of stabilizer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, did you notice any difference when you were actually doing the quilting? So um, I noticed a difference in the sound as it was punching through Ooh. because um, I was busy doing 12 things mm -hmm. and I let Pro Stitcher do the work for me. So I was in visual and earshot of the machine and I could hear when it was punching through the heavier sections. I've got quite a lot of buildup through here. Yeah. And as I was getting started trying to eliminate some of that, I actually cut out some of the fabric behind oh. these sections before laying the yellow over mm -hmm. on and pressing it down just to kind of minimize some of that thickness, yeah. you know, right. anticipating uh -huh. there could be some issues. Cause I had, I had quite a few layers there and it was just really, really thick. Um, there's my bee that terrified oh. me. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a fun little story for yeah. me to remember, but. Uh, now that we know how to play a little trick on Denise. Oh, please don't, <laughs> please don't. Oh no, no, no. Fabric spiders, fabric things oh, on the floor. Yeah, oh no, oh. I will definitely scream. So I can share a little story going off topic if you guys don't mind if I squirrel for a go moment. Go for it, go for it. <laughs> One of our educators had posted about how um, there was a spider in her sewing room and she was so terrified and then came to realize it was just some thread. <laughs> I said, well, it could have been worse. You could have done what I did where I thought it was a piece of thread, picked it up and it was a spider. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, no. So, 
<laughs> be careful of the bugs in your sewing room because you never know if it's thread or know, bees yeah. or bugs. Put your glasses on before you <laughs> pick it up, huh? Is that the I did the have my glasses on, story? but... <laughs> Oh. Sorry, I digress. Oh, oh my goodness. So oh my goodness. So funny. So uh, well, Denise, I think this turned out beautifully. I think all the projects did. I think yes. we're all excited to work on something I agree. else. Um, keep moving forward with this. And yep. we are really excited to see what all of you have done. Uh, it's been so much fun this month to see the comments everybody's making and how a lot of you, a lot of you were just like us, where you've got a kit or a pattern that you'd bought at some point and you'd um, squirreled it away. Another, <laughs> another, you know, WIP work in progress, right? Yep. Um, or UFOs, heaven forbid. <laughs> um, but we would love to see what you've gotten done this week. So be sure and tag us in those with um, hashtag handy quilter or hashtag um, collage quilts. We, yeah. Yeah. Send it in. Yeah. And if you have liked what we've done this month with this little project and you'd like to see other projects, please reach out, put a comment. Yeah. Let us know what kind of things you'd like us to do. And maybe we'll pick your idea and work through it with you. Another <laughs> another educator challenge coming in the future. Yep. We've got some ideas, but we'd love to see what, what ideas all of you have too. So thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel and have fun quilting.